What's going on YouTube? Tom here, and I gotta ask one question. Dear Ford, what's the holdup? Some of us are patiently, or very impatiently, waiting on specs for the new Mustang. As many of you know, I am looking to buy a 2018 Mustang when, the, when they actually go on sale, that is. So anyway, I wanted to talk about it. Let's talk about some of the, what we know, some of the questions we still have, and also, what exactly am I going to get for some... Those of you who are new to the channel, yes, I'm looking to get the 2018 Mustang GT. I'm looking to get a manual and a performance package. So, anyway, what we do know already is, yes, it's going to have the Coyote motor. Downside to that is, we have no idea how much horsepower it's going to get yet. The Ford has kept us blissfully in the dark. Now, I believe this is actually for two reasons. One, it's pr pretty clear people have talked about that. So I believe Ford is doing this for two reasons. One of which is obviously they want to make sure that the sales of the 2017 aren't affected. You know, when Apple comes out with a new iPhone, they kind of they kind of have rumors about it. They kind of leak a couple of bits of information to let you know there's a new one, but then they keep you blissfully in the dark until the, pretty much right before the phone comes out. And, we saw that with the iPhone 7. They kind of, they're like, oh yeah, they're gonna come out with a new iPhone 7. Okay, what else? Nope, you don't know anything until basically right when it comes out. And the idea is that way the iPhone 6 sales weren't affected. Ford's kind of doing the same thing. They don't want you, they want you now, if you really badly want a Mustang, they want you to say, let me go get a 17 now rather than wait for the 18. Now, I, of course, I'm waiting for the 18 and a bunch of people already are. But yeah, the idea is they don't want the sales to be affected as bad. And then for two, I believe, and this is also kind of somewhat out of the Apple playbook, is they want the suspense. They want you to kind of be on the edge of your seat waiting like, oh, is it, when is it going to come out yet? Is it out yet? Is it out yet? They want you to wait. They want you to have this suspense. So anyway, the power figures are so far a rumor, but some pretty big rumors have come out now and one of them is that the Coyote is going to get 455 horsepower judging by the kind of Easter egg in the dashboard picture where they kind of have four and then 55 so the other school of thought is 505 which I don't see happening just because that's gonna put it into Shelby territory which obviously to me that would hurt Shelby sales and then that's not really a good thing now the EcoBoost is another one where they the rumor is that it's just going to get the Focus RS spec version of the engine, which is going to put it at 350, which, again, we don't know, but that's the rumor so far. So then the other big things are some of the options that are going to come out. So the big one is the digital dashboard, the digital or gauge clusters, I should say. It's coming out now. Ford has, has said it like it's going to be standard, but we really don't know. Now, there's also been a rumor that the analog gauges are going to be still available. My big question to Ford is, how is that going to work? Is it going to be, am I going to have to get the premium in order to get the, that digital gauge cluster, or will it become available on both versions? Will it be a standalone option, or will it come as like a package? My theory would be like technology package. You get some other things, and then they throw in the gauge cluster. Unclear right now, but my hopes are, if I, for me to get it, it would either have to be, of course, I'm going to get a base model. I'm not getting a premium. Some people, everyone says they're the other way around. They would rather get a premium. I actually prefer the base model. I just don't see spending $4,000, in some cases, just to get more options. It's a waste of money, in my opinion. But... If it's available, if it is going to be available in the base model, my hopes are for me to get it, it'd be a standalone option. Will it be? No clue yet. So another one that for sure I want to get is the Recaro seats, which if it's anything like the current car, it will just, again, be a standalone option. Now they did release the one picture with the red seats, which I already said in a couple of other videos, I said it's terrible looking. So I'm pretty sure that's not gonna be a thing across the board. I'm pretty sure it's just one configuration. If the base model is gonna be anything like the current base model, it'll just be the one color option where it's to you get your cloth seats, which 
not opposed to because I like the base model. I love the look of that interior. Simple way I like interiors. Don't like I don't like a lot of colors on the interior. I like if I'm boring, oh well. So then the other big questions are, and the other two big ones for me anyway, on the GT it is supposed to get set to get the active exhaust and the Magna Ride suspension. Those are two big ones for me. Magna Ride, because obviously it's going to really improve the handling of the car. And then Active Exhaust, because I want, I don't know about the rest of you, but I actually want to be a considerate Mustang owner. If I have to go somewhere in the middle of the night, or have to, you know, have to come home in the middle of the night or leave early in the morning, I want to be able to put the car into stealth mode and make sure I don't piss everybody off. Ooh, box body right there. That's nice. Speaking of Mustangs. Speaking of active exhaust, that literally proves my point. That was completely unplanned. So yes, my plan is to not piss people off if I have to do it. I don't want, we've got, actually in my neighborhood, there's actually a kid with a GT Mustang and, he, and all my neighbors are talking about, they're trying to give him tickets because he loves to hoon around in the middle of the night and it's pissing everybody off. And so anyway, I want to be considerate if the active exhaust becomes an option, I want to definitely get it so I can close the valves and not piss everybody off. So, now the question is with the Magna Ride and the active exhaust is will they be standalone options as well or will they come as, and my theory would be if it is going to come as a package, it would probably be performance package. Not a problem because that's one of the packages I want to get anyway, but it would of course drive the price up. And Magna Ride, I could live without. Active exhaust? 10 out of 10, I want active exhaust. But we all have, once again, we have to see. And obviously, that is, either one is going to drive the price up a little bit, which some people have criticized. It's still going to be sub 40 to me. I look at it and think, even if that is a thing, it's still going to be sub 40 for a Mustang. But, I have to wait and see. And then, of course, the other big one is, and this is a big one to me because I am picky about this, is color. Course, exterior color is another big one. Obviously, the car's got to look good. And if you haven't figured it out from me owning a red truck, I love red. And so far, the clear leader to me in terms of color is ruby red, which I was thinking it. I was thinking it was worried. It was, well, worried it was might be get, might get discontinued because I read about royal crimson and I thought, oh, so maybe it's going to learn replace ruby red with it and I looked at royal crimson and thought well that's too dark why would they get rid of ruby red and so far it's not looking like ruby red is going anywhere but once you just never know Ford has yet to release the official specs but they have they shown the pictures of royal crimson red and it's good but it's a little dark for my taste but I will say this it does look good it was it's look it's like a goth middle schooler's dream color it's the darkest red they make so that's that's up for contention. That's color number one. Well, if I don't get ruby red, ruby red is my number one, and royal crimson is my number two. Race red, I don't really like because it's kind of Campbell's soup red. Now, obviously, you don't pay extra for ruby or for race red, whereas you pay extra for ruby red. And you probably are gonna have to pay extra for royal crimson metallic. It's not called red. I keep saying royal crimson red. It's not actually called red. It's royal crimson. Metallic is the proper name, but I don't like to say metallic because it, most every color is metallic. So an Orange Fury is the other new one they seem to be trying to push in their advertisements. It's like the, the first picture of the car that came out was Orange Fury. and They're talking about, oh, it's a new color. and Orange, to me, does not belong on a car unless you're about 14. Because I, I just don't like the look of it. But either way, it is going to be a color now. If I wasn't going to go with red, I'd probably honestly go for Grabber Blue because it really does grab me. I love the just Grabber Blue. It's just, it's an amazing, it's, it's one of those other colors that just grabs your attention. That's probably why they named it that. Of course, and you, it's not like you don't see it a lot, but it just, it looks so good. It's actually my girlfriend's favorite color. She was telling me that she, she would recommend it I get that color, but... We actually joked about getting matching Mustangs. I would get a red one and she'd get Grabber Blue and then that'd be pretty awesome because one of her coworkers actually has a Mustang and she's kind of jealous of it. It's completely impractical for her. 
because she like she needs a de car with a decent back seat. When you have a kid, you kind of can't have a Mustang. You could, but not as practical. So then, so the other colors beyond that, they make, of course, a whole range now. Beyond that, we'll just have to see whatever, what else, whatever else comes out, because there might be some other things I, that Ford just hasn't even speculated on yet that might come out, and I just say, I have to have it. it happens when you look at a car, you just say, you know what, I gotta have that. I gotta have that particular option, so... We'll wait and see. Ford is, is keeping us in the dark, but like I said, it's uh, two reasons. One, they don't want to kill the sales of the current car, and then for two, I think they are trying to build some tension with it. Because every picture out there, pretty much, on the Ford website, it's been the same kind of list of specs since January. They haven't really released any new information. Now, for me, that was actually significant because I signed up for email updates. I never sign up for email updates. I mean, the last time I had put my email in on something was a, I test drove the, the 17 back in November, and they made me put my email in and say, well, are you interested in the car? And I put 4GT just to look, basically to leave them a hint to say, I'm not interested in emails right now. But, of course, that basically was the turning point for me to say, yeah, I think I wanted Ford Mustang. That was, that was kind of it. So either way, let me know in the comments what you all think. If anyone else is looking at getting the new Mustang, what do you all think of it so far? Do you think Ford is on their way to making a hit, or do you think this car is going to be a complete miss, and you'd just rather wait for the S650 or whatever the new Mustang is going to be, the hybrid one? So anyway, let me know below what you all think. Let me know if there's any options you all think I should be getting instead, or do you think that my spec list of the GT performance package is good. And yes, it will be a manual for anyone asking on that, because I know the 10 speed is supposed to be a thing. As much as I like automatics, it's gonna have to be a manual for me. Either way, if you're stopping in for the first time, please subscribe, I would love to grow my channel. If you like this video, go ahead and leave a thumbs up, and have a good day.